Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations. Thank you very much for joining me for this live stream today. It is bloody hot. Uh, the temperature that you see up in the corner there, 35 degrees Celsius, is the temperature near the water. Here it's 38 degrees Celsius, so a few degrees warmer. Um, hello to everyone, welcome. Thank you for participating in this poll. I will give everyone a chance to uh, get the little YouTube's notifications and come in and press the little button on the thing with there and choose one and then I will uh, go and grab the uh, computer that we will be working on. So um, I will uh, do my very normal thing here of saying a quick hello to people. Uh, God, this poll gets in the way, doesn't it? Out of the way. There we go. All right. So I'm going to say hello to... I oh, can't even see the people. Poll. Um, hello uh, to uh, Dana is here. K Mac Vintage. Josh Hayes. Who is up the top? I can't see the name of the person up the top. So you might have to just say. Uh, well, hopefully you chat it again. So um, okay. Josh Hayes. Mystery Margot. Sad Mac three five six. DJ Craze. Francois. Sorry, uh, you had to head off to sleep, but hello to you anyway. Uh, Enzo, Fitzhume, Jack 68K, have I already said that? I'm not sure. Tom Armstrong, Paul Bailey, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong again. Uh, Gibbatronics, Kai is here. Hello there, Kai. I hope you are well. Max Button is here. Uh, Steve from Mac84, hello. Uh, Colin from This Does Not Compute, hello. Uh, working my way through. Josh Hayes, I've already said you. I think I've already said you, but if I haven't, hello. Eric is here. Hello, Eric. Uh, David Tattersall. Um, nom, 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 nom. Brian uh, Muniz. Muniz? 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 Sorry. Um, Jared Burma. Charlie Seibert. Okay, I think I've said hello to everyone. In case I missed someone, just let me know. Uh, and feel free to jump on and say hello. So at the moment, I'm looking at this poll... And, okay, we've got 32 votes at this stage, and we're neck and neck with the 2SI and the Quadra 605. So not a lot of love for the LC2 or the LC3 out there by the looks of things, but 2SI, Quadra 605, we might have to uh, do a coin toss there or something like that. I'm going to be weller come Monday. I'll be able to uh, be used as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Good on you, Kai. So I am glad to hear that you are finally getting the uh, help you need. So that is fantastic news. That is all scheduled to happen. Um, now, oh, I hope if anyone who didn't get to see the trailer, I did a trailer of this video, and it's basically just uh, me and my wife driving off to a location here in Sydney. It's a... Um, uh, historical suburb called Windsor um, and it is about 35 minutes kind of northwest of where I live and where I live I'm about uh, probably half an hour west of um, like the main the main city of Sydney I mean I'm still part of Sydney but uh, Sydney is a geographically a very large place and um, uh, and anyhow so I headed out there and had a look at these Macs and then also uh, went and had a little look at Windsor which is a lovely lovely town very very old it's, it's kind of uh, a very old town that hasn't been all torn down and rebuilt there's lots of beautiful old buildings there anyhow that's enough about Windsor um, so it went out there uh, there was a marketplace ad um, with a whole bunch of computers not just Macs Macs and PCs and cards and hard drives and you name it uh, shout out to Terry if you are watching um, and I, um, 
I heard about this. Well, someone sent a message. I think Steve from Mac 84 actually said, hey, have a look at this. And um, anyhow, I, um, I said to the guy, look, I'd love to just go and have a look. Because I thought even if I don't end up buying anything, I, I can at least maybe give him some advice on what the stuff might be worth or might be able to find some buyers for it. Uh, so I headed out there. And if you did see the trailer, you'll see that quite a lot of those computers are pretty junk you know rusted shells rusted chassis bits missing and to be honest i mean it's like there was a 7300 there Pamac 7300 well i mean i've already got a 7300 i've got like three 7600s no i've got three 7300s i think anyhow um uh which was the 7300 is the fastest one isn't it i'm pretty sure um of the 7000 series uh, and then there was there was some performers there, and I mean I'm not a big fan. Of, I've got two, maybe three performers. So I ended up walking away with an LC2, an LC3, a Quadra 605, a 2SI, and um, God, I wish I could. The, the this um, what's it called? What's this thing called? Closed pole. That's not going to end it, is it? No, it just closes. Good, excellent. Okay, now I can read things. Um, <laughs> okay, so let me just have a quick look here. Uh, where's the trailer? The trailer is something that you had to you had to watch prior to the live stream starting. So you had to sort of click on it, and when you click on it. Rather than just seeing a great big thumbnail there, it actually shows a trailer. Um, I will pop a link in the chat so you can view it if you want to see it separately. Uh, I'll do that now. YouTube. Dana, leaving work now. Shall join when I get home. You better. Have a good stream. Oh, come on, Jay. Don't tell me you're not watching it. Uh, all right, so let me, uh, I'm getting pinged by Dana and Jay. All right, so I'm just going to grab the link for this, copy a link. So anyone who did miss the trailer, oh crap, there we go. Anyone who did miss the trailer can actually view it here. Um, there we go. Now, so one good thing about this. Okay, so I went in, I, 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 Asked him, you know, what he wanted for these computers. I ended up getting, as I say, LC2, 3, Quadra 605, 2SI. I walked away with an LC580 as well, but that is in... Uh, it's it's pretty much just junk. The chassis is rusted, and the battery was not removed, and it has spewed all over the logic board. So he pretty much threw the LC580 in for free, and to be honest, I already have a 580, and I really don't need to. I thought it was a 575 when I initially said, ah, oh, I'd like that one. And then when I opened it up, I'm like, no, nah, this is a 580. Uh, have you seen the latest reloaded boards from Max Ones? Two CI are now here, and Bol has done the 475, 605. Wonderful. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's that's really really good stuff. Um, I've got, uh, I've actually got, I think, a battery bomb two CI. So I probably should grab one and then do the. Um, uh, so, uh, sorry, um, I didn't come away with anything else. There was lots of other stuff there, but I just did not want any of that other stuff. I did. I don't have room to store it, and most of it, I think, is just e-waste anyway. It's, it's, you know, I mean, there was a black one there, and while people might go, oh, Director's Edition, Director's Edition, it wasn't a Director's Edition. Whether people are aware of this or not, there was actually a line of, I think, 5,200, maybe 5,300, I can't remember which one it was. There was a line of those that were sold here in Australia with the black finish, that weren't director's edition and they're actually not as uncommon as you might think out here i've got one a black one with a black keyboard and a black mouse um and i don't need another one mine works uh, that one was a pile of rust so um uh right so what are we going to do here what we're going to do we're going to have a look at this poll and we're going to make a decision i think i've given everyone enough time to vote does everyone feel like they've had enough time to vote hmm. let me uh let me, uh, I closed the window that I had open and I feel kind of stupid about that now. So we'll just grab that again. 
and content live. There we go. All right. So having a look at this poll, I'm about to close it down. We have, we're going to have to toss a coin unless someone wants to get in there and make a deciding vote. Um, I'll give you five seconds to jump on there and potentially make a deciding vote. Otherwise, we're going to have to flip a coin. And that could be a problem because I'm not even sure I have a coin in here. But that's what we'll have to do, I guess. Um, 5400s in the UK. Okay, cool. Black ones aren't hard to find here. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's a nightmare fuel. Yes, they are. They are, but maybe that's... Maybe that's part of the fun. And of course, one of the things which I've recently discovered, thanks to Kai's assistance, is that the old, um, the uh, crystal oscillators in those old Macs, 2CI and 2SI, have now become quite susceptible to the ultrasonic cleaning damage. And, uh, and so with these 2SIs, you might potentially work on them and get them actually running, and then you're bunging them in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then you have to replace the... Um, uh, the uh, crystals. So, um, if you encounter another black one, director's edition or not, uh, why not save it for those of us that want the black one? Uh, you, you, because they're impossible to ship. They just fall apart. Uh, so the only way, if I was going to save one, uh, someone would actually have to come and pick it up in personage. Um, all right, so look, the poll here has now got quarter 605 and 36% of the votes, it is the win. I am now going to end this poll, and we are going to work on a Quadra 605. So I'm going to pop up and grab that. And I have about another 300 of those 15.6672 oscillators, if anyone needs one. I need the... Um, mm, crap, I can't remember what they are. But I need a few. I do need a few. Um... I used my last one on the 2CI that I repaired. Uh, so that's probably them, isn't it? Is that their 15.6672? Is that them? Are they so that it gives us 30 or something? Anyway. End poll. There we go. Poll is ended. I hope that's now gone. Which Mac should I look at first? Quadra 605 wins. I'm going to go up and grab the Quadra 605 now, so please be patient. I, I will be in voice contact, but I just won't be able to see the screen, I won't be able to read the comments, but I'll be back in just a moment. So, this is me climbing over a couple of Macintosh SEs, and then me climbing over a Macintosh Plus, and then me taking a little walk to the backyard, and then up here, oh look at that. Here comes a Quadra 605. <laughs> With very, very delicate spindler plastics. Sizz, sizz. Ha. Ha. All right, quarter 605, as per the public request. <laughs> um, was it the 50 megahertz one for the main clock? I think so. Uh. Greg Brady, hello there, welcome. Also spotted the Quadra 605 Power PC video you posted on Tinker Different. The fun thing about those cards is the actual PPC chip on board is rated far higher than the card runs by default. But how on earth do I get it to go faster? If you know that, Kai, please let me know, because I would like to know. If you do the 33 megahertz mod, it doesn't though. It didn't, it didn't run, unless uh, there might be a fault with it. I did the mod. I did the mod on the uh, Quadra 605. I took it up to um, 33 megahertz. And then when I tried to flip over to the PowerPC card, it chimes. Goes no further. Just black screen. No, it doesn't boot. doesn't load up into the operating system. Switch it straight back to, uh, to the original 25 megahertz and worked again so i don't know whether i've got a dodgy upgrade card or something like that uh it's the genuine apple one i don't know um but uh, anyhow that's the situation i had with it tried without the l2 cash card i don't think i did i might try that next time uh, so anyhow, that video that Kai is referring to, which I did share exclusively on Tinker Different, uh, that will actually be going live as a 
proper release video soon. Uh, I'll probably the next day or two. It's basically, I only just released a video. I released a video which was a review of a 3D scanner, and I didn't want to release another video straight after it. You know, I want to stagger the content a little. So that video about the uh, Quadra 605 will be coming out uh, very soonly. Now, just uh, uh, again, we just say hello to Davros. Hello, Davros. Davros is my guardian. He's looking after me. Uh, just a reminder, because Russell T. Davies apparently doesn't realize this. Uh, Davros is disabled, but that does not inherently make disabled people evil. Okay? Davros is evil. Davros is disabled. All right? But it doesn't make disabled people evil. Russell T. Davies doesn't realize that. Right. Quadra 605. There it is. It's a little dirty, and of course we're missing one of these clips. One of the things I just did want to mention that I, I do with all of my Macs with the Spindler plastics that have these, when I get these lids off, assuming they're not cracked, I then get a little uh, Dremel sort of thing and I shave off the bit of plastic. That the, So if you imagine there's a bit sticking out like that, and oh, I've got to do it that way, like that, and it kind of clips down onto it. I shave this off, or this off, either one. I shave it off so that it doesn't actually have to clip anymore. It just plonks down on top. It's not going anywhere. It's going to have a keyboard, a monitor sitting on top of it. Um, but I just do that so they don't actually have to clip. And then you've got a much, much lower chance that you're going to snap them off like this. Uh, so let's take the lid off. The CPU in the 605 is full of... Uh, it's interesting, the 605 that I have has an LC040 in it. Don't, I, I don't know why, but it does. We're going to see what's in this one. Oh. So just for the people who don't realise, the 68040 processors were available in two flavours. There was a 68040 full, and that had an integrated floating point unit or math coprocessor. The 6... Uh, see, this is another one, 68LC. So the Quadra 605 definitely came out, certainly in this part of the world. Here's my clip. Uh, I, 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 he saved the clip, so I can at least try and glue it on. So at least in this part of the world, the Quadra 605 did have um, a... Um, uh, it did have the LC68040 chip in it, like this one. My 605 had an LC0402. There you go. So um, so who knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe they changed it later on. I know that the Quadra 605 that my work purchased when I used to work for a company many, many years ago during that time, the, um, the Quadra 605 that we got then actually came with a network card pre-installed. I don't know if this one maybe did once upon a time as well. Okay, so let's have a little look at this because this is all about... The fact that this is a barn find Mac, and I think we need to have a look. Uh, okay, and we're just going to go here to top view. There we go. It's a little bit green. Sorry about that. So this is the uh, this is the Mac. We're looking at it top down. We've got here 2.1 gigabyte SCSI hard drive has Mac data on it. So I will have to have a look at that if it works and potentially save it. And of course, uh, I did make an agreement with the guy uh, Terry. Uh, who I bought these from, that if I found any data on there, that I would uh, recover it, give it to him on a memory stick, uh, and then erase the hard drive. Uh, and I have always stayed true to my word when I do that sort of stuff, because uh, I need to, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's people's data, you know? I mean, if they're selling this thing to you and it's too old for them, they can't figure out how to erase it, I don't want them destroying the hard drive. It's like, don't destroy it. I promise to erase it for you. It's in shit condition. Now, the good thing is that he has removed the battery. He had the sense to remove the battery from all the machines that he knew how to remove the battery from. He wasn't sure how to do it on some of the others, and one of those does indeed have battery leakage. But, as you can see, this is not the original colour of the metal that used to, that was underneath this. This is not the original colour of that RF shield or that grounding shield. Uh, this has taken on a, uh, a patina, shall we say. Um, and I would love to take this speaker and, and, um, and uh, what do you call it, fan out, but if I bend these little plastic things back, they will just break. 
So we're going to have to whip this board out. I'm not going to fire it up, by the way, just in case anyone's thinking, hey, fire it up. No, not before we do at least a little bit of routine maintenance here. Uh, power supply, who knows? I will test it initially with a power supply that is known working, and then we can try this power supply later on. Um, but, you know, it's a real kind of over humanity type moment looking at this board because I don't know how well you can see it, but it is really dusty, really grubby. Uh, now, the way these come out, there are these little plastic things here that you bend outwards in order to move the, the, um, the board out. But uh, typically with these, when you do bend them out, they will then snap off. So we're going to do that very gently now. Oh, it didn't snap off. Oh, I've got to take the fan out. Will that snap off? Oh! <laughs> yes, we lost one. Got one, lost one. There we go. Okay. It's all inevitable. I mean, this is going to happen. These things are just so freaking brittle. All right, come on. Where'd you come? Now, what is good about this? This has a 32 megabyte RAM SIM in it. As standard, just came with it, loaded, 32. We've got two times 256 VRAM SIMs in here, so that's nice. Obviously, you can stick two 512s in here. This has got two 256s. Um, okay, so now I need to put this down somewhere, and I need to do it in such a way where I don't break it. Uh, patina, patina, lovely. <clears throat> oh, we've got a little, uh, looks like a spider's nest or something there. Okay, so he's going there very gently. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at this board. I might zoom in a little bit so you can get a closer look at the gunge. There we go. So here it is. Uh, you probably can't see that, but that does definitely say 68LC40. There we go. It's a little bit like that, uh, if anyone remembers the movie uh, uh, Aliens where they discover the uh, the young girl and she's dirty and then she cleans and she says, uh-oh, I've, ma I've made a clean spot. And that's what I've just done there. I've made a clean spot on the CPU. Um, right, okay, so battery cover off. I'm gonna a little, uh, oh, my Ziploc bags are all up. I took the, my wife wanted some Ziploc bags and so I said, yeah, use some of mine. And now all my Ziploc bags are up there. So I will use this one. Here's this one. Okay, 32 megabyte RAM SIM. Apple's Anonymous, hello there. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I look. I will agree with you, Kai, that I that, that uh, the the idea of just removing these boards without any screws or anything like that, just bending things and sliding them out and just popping things out, it was great. I mean, it was great as a user of them back in the day, you know, because you you kind of felt, you know, like these were designed to be, you know, uh, used by anyone sort of thing. Anyone could just whip them out and open them up and stuff. Um, and, of course, it, that still rings true with the LC, LC2, but... Uh, they had the stronger plastics. Once we get into LC3, Quadra 605, LC475, they're using the crap plastics. I have got um, an LC3 board and power supply um, with no case because apparently the case just <coughs> broke into a zillion pieces. Um, the 7000 series Outrigger even had a little kickstand. I know, but the, the, what, now that those because those cases have terrible plastics inside. The little clip that goes over top of the PCI cards, that just that just breaks. You just flip it open and it snaps. Um, but then when you open up that the um, the power supply, and it, you know and, uh, that kickstand which ends up falling, and then I end up seeing all these people doing posts and uh, social media going, "What's this little piece of plastic for?" And it's like, well, if it wasn't broken off, you'd know what it was for. Right. So this is the board. This is the board in all its glory. It's very, very dusty, but it doesn't actually appear to be that much in the way of corrosion. Uh, I'm going to actually dust it a little bit here so I can see it better. I mean, I should, of course, just ultrasonically clean it, but uh, I won't do that now. This is a makeup brush, by the way. Uh, they work really well because they're incredibly soft. And they're good for getting dust off. 
Let's hope there's no asbestos in this dust. It's always possible. Yeah, um, uh, Colin just makes a point there about the uh, Color Classic being spared the uh, the bad plastics. It's very, very true. You take a Color Classic and you take a, an LC475 and you put those things side by side and you would swear that those things were... Oh, you would swear those things were made at the same time. But the LC475 will just crumble in your hands. But the, the Color Classic is actually quite strong. When you do the little bendy plastic things to pull off the little cover on the back, uh, it comes off really easily. It doesn't break. Um, so, you know what? This Quadra 605, now that I've given it a dust, actually looks pretty good. The, the worst part is this thing here. That's the, uh, what is it, the headphone socket? The head, I think that's the headphone and that's the microphone. That's the headphone socket there, and it is very rusty. Rusty McRusty. Um, so now it's just a basic standard uh, recapping job, I sound of things. Uh, has someone made a 3D replacement for the kickstand? Not that I'm aware of. Wouldn't be hard, though. Even have a PowerMax 6100 intact. Well, my 6100 is intact as well, so I think it comes down to luck sometimes. Apparently storing them in, uh, was it humid environments? Improves the chance of the plastic not getting brittle. But that, of course, then brings on a whole bunch of other problems. You know, humid environments aren't good for storing the electronics part. Vinegar is a good rust converter. Mmm. So is rust converter. Um, yeah. I mean, I might actually... I've got, I've got a, I think, a few spare logic boards, donor boards, where I can actually just replace this with a non-rusty one. I've got a pile over there. So let's have a look at this under the microscope and we will uh, do the old uh, recapping type thing. So scope you. It's been a while since I've done this. I've been doing live streams where I've been do building kits and the kits are too big for me to, uh, to use the microscope. So it's microscope view time. Now if we hold that straight, that's straight there. I'll just need to no, other way. There we go. All right. Okay. So let's have a look at the probably the worst area, which is around the sound chip. Um, there we go. I think it's all in focus. So we've definitely got some rust around here, but it's sort of just sitting on the surface. Just going to. Uh, it doesn't seem to have penetrated into the. Uh, board itself so I mean I really don't feel like there's going to be any issue that after a good old ultrasonic clean why why is this so dirty after a good old ultrasonic clean I think we'll be fine it doesn't look too terrible <laughs> human is plenty the uh, UK is plenty humid and damp but here's the flip side to that uh, human environments are apparently promote the uh, vinegar syndrome of the uh, LCD displays so yeah so you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't just stop, don't collect old things there you go there's the answer to the problem all right let's get some caps off here I bought the cap ass here we go um, I've got little heat shields I just need to find them I did a bit of a tidy up the other day, but I don't I think I did a very good one. All right, so I just need to shield the plastic here a little bit so that when I whip these off, I don't melty melty. Now, the Quadra 605 is actually a really nice little Mac. I'm, I'm quite a fan of the 605 because it's such a compact little, little computer, but of course still with that um, 68040 chip. So if you're someone who likes the older operating systems like System 7.1 and you like some of the older games, you know, these the, the uh, they run really well on this. And of course having the um, 
Uh, the different RAM slot on these means that you can sort of just, yeah, stick a single 32 in there. I think someone told me you can st stick a 64 in there even. I could be wrong. <sighs> oh, always grab the... the, uh, the so Paul, Paul has just said, I passed up on a surgical ophthalmic uh, microscope on Marketplace for 400 Australian dollars and I've been kicking myself ever since. Would have been very high quality. Mm. Yeah, I, look, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Apple lately because it was the Macintosh's 40th anniversary the other day. And uh, I, um, uh, it, it is really interesting looking at Apple as a company. Uh, and if you are old enough, like sort of my sort of age, uh, where I was actually working with Macs professionally, at a time when Apple just seemed to be destroying itself. Uh, they were producing model after model after model after model. I mean, if you have a look at Apple's history of their product releases and you look at that era during the 1990s, uh, early 1990s, where they're just bringing out computer after computer after computer. And as a consumer, you'd be like, okay, which Apple should I buy? It's like, I don't know, you know. Um, I'm kind of glad we're doing the 605 because it doesn't have anywhere near as many caps as, uh, say, the LC2, for example. I think the LC2 has like 13 caps, something like that. 13. Now, you know what I, uh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't bring a screen down here for testing later on. I know that's optimistic that it's going to work, but you know, uh, if it does, I will go up and get a screen so we can actually see potentially if that hard drive spins up and whether we actually boot into a system. Uh, that's always fun. Uh, I, I did actually have a situation, and I have mentioned this on a live stream before, but uh, I worked at a company that did pre-press uh, and graphic design. And um, we had a few clients that were... Most most of our customers were Mac users, most of them, because they, they just dominated the um, the graphic design industry. Um, and but we had a few PC customers. Well, I used to have one that used to love coming in and telling me how crap Apple was going. And, uh, and I remember him saying to me once that, and this was in the 90s, that he, he, said, he, he said he reckons Apple will be gone like within five years. That was what he said. And to be honest, that was a pretty fair assessment during that time. We didn't realize that they were going to have a second coming. Uh, now, if anyone is wondering what's going to happen to these Macs, I, I, I may end up keeping the 605, only because my 605 case is in such poor shape. But in terms of the LC2 and LC3 and the 2SI, I will probably end up selling them. So, probably end up uh, whacking them up onto the old E of the Bay and uh, seeing if we get any takers. Um... I need my... So when I'm doing uh, some of this heat, hot air station type stuff in areas like this where we have a little crowd of plastic going on, there's plastic, 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 I'm actually going to use some um, foil and I'm going to wrap it around to keep it all the area around it protected. So I have here a roll of, for anyone who is who has n not seen my stuff before, I have here a roll, top view, of, this is adhesive foil. It's made of aluminium or aluminum, depending on where you come from. And it's just like this, it has paper backing there and it's, you can stick it onto stuff. Uh, what I tend to do with this is, the advantage of it is it's quite thick, it's thicker than just standard foil. And I can get this and I can kind of manipulate it and bend it and twist it and shape it around an area like this to provide some protection against the uh, the hot air so a little heat shield for when I remove this I won't end up melting plastic. Uh, one of the things I always say to people when I do these that uh, every care is taken to not melt things but sometimes I melt things.
don't care at all about the uh, melting of the plastic underneath the uh, underneath the component because that component is being thrown away and I do not need to keep the plastic. Hello to Jim's Retro Stuff, hello to uh, Abaleski, um, and hello to Charlie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Who cares if you melt the old caps? Exactly. Uh, okay, my friend at the time in the 90s when everyone thought Apple will die bought $50,000 of Apple shares. He is a multi-millionaire now while I am still working my ass off at the same job. Uh, uh, and then it looks like that was probably going to be more and more stuff was written there. But yeah, that's that kind of sucks, doesn't it? But then again, the the... the the um, um, the benefit of hindsight, you know, um, and there are all sorts of things that we could have potentially done and, and that, but just life doesn't work out that way sometimes. BC Jeffro, hello. Is about to blow. When you see the caps rise up like that while they're heating them, they're actually expanding inside and the, the uh, aluminium part at the top actually starts lifting up. That's an indication that that capacitor is actually not compromised. It's not leaking because it's still got a seal. When you've got the really leaky ones, when you apply them with heat, they just they, they don't change they don't warp they don't expand like that but ones like this uh, definitely I mean I would say there's a very good chance if I plugged the power supply into this it would would have just worked um, because uh, I just think those um, um, these caps are probably still all right ish all right I all right ish I won't say perfect but I think they were probably still reasonably in spec not anymore because I've destroyed them they were before now, I had a scalpel here just a moment ago, and I've lost it. There it is. Uh, I just want to shave a little bit of the plastic that I melted here. I just melted some plastic. Shave, shave, shave. You can barely see it, though. There we go. Now, this is going to be a little bit of fun to solder, because I've got to get in here in between and clean that all up. We do need to do some cleaning. Going to be using some flux for that. Uh, generally, when I'm cleaning these pads, what I do is apply flux and I apply new solder and I get it all hot and clean and make it until those pads all look beautiful and shiny. And then I take the solder away and they're all ready for soldering onto it. A uh, couple of things. Um, um, flux. When it comes to talking about flux, um, uh, there is really only one brand that I use, and it was up until recently referred to as Amtec, but they have gone through a rebrand. They are now referred to as Stiri, S T I R R I. If you happen to be on Amazon and you see this brand of Stiri flux, them selling the same formulas, things like the V2 formula or the V3 formula, that is them. They are legit. Stiri, great brand. Their, um, their syringes are in red, so they're very, very identifiable. So, uh, so anyhow, just letting everyone know, Stiri Flux, awesome. Hello, hello Dana, hello. Dana is here now. Dana was at work before, um, which, you know, I mean, people have to do that sometimes, you know, have to go to work. Um, I'm just choosing which Flux to use. Um, I've got a whole stack here. <laughs> I'm going to use the V3. So this is the formula. I did a video on this. Um, are they keeping the model names like 599? So they are not keeping 599. So if you have a look at the Styri, if you're after the V2, it's just basically called, and they call it something like Styri, Styri V2 or something like that. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on that in the not too distant future. They sent me 
a massive care package of every single flux they sell. Now, I don't think I can actually go in and review every single one, but I've certainly given a few of them a try and I am more than impressed. Uh, they are making great quality flux, no doubt about it. I started using one here, which is uh, called HTTF, so high temperature tacky flux, and that's great. As I say, this is the old V3. The reason why I like this V3 is I have this one here. I think it's this one. Is this one? Yeah, this one. And I actually influenced the formula in this, and I feel very proud of that. I'm very happy to have made a contribution to the making of this flux because when I first tried it, it was it was just too sweet. They put way too much um, scent in it. And I said, look, guys, you need to dial back that scent. And they did. Uh, they listened to me. They said, ah, oh, that Brankus guy, well, isn't he uh, learned? Excellent. 10 grams is the way. To, I always get the 10s. This is a 5. I always get the 10. Oh, God, this, I've got a great big fat, um, what do you call it, uh, tip. <laughs> no double entendres, please. This is the tip of my soldering iron. Um, so, uh, yeah, the 10's a great size. They do make uh, the, what is it, the 30's? 30 grams? But my issue with them is that they have a, I find, they have a high tendency, and this is just because of the syringe, they have a tiny, high tendency that when you squeeze them and then you put them down, they, um, the little bits keep oozing out. And, uh, come on, don't be a thing. Ah, crap. Um, yeah, they keep oozing out, and that becomes a bit of a pain. So, uh, uh, so the tens, I find, aren't as susceptible to that. There we go. Um, family show, you sure? <coughs> God, I'm hot. It's so freaking hot. It's 38 degrees Celsius outside. And it's humid too, and it's so bloody humid. It's moist. I'm gonna crank this up. This is just this is doing its thing, but it's just not doing it enough. So come on. I'm just gonna put this here. We'll set the mode to max. Cooling. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, that's much better. It's blowing a lot harder. It might be a bit noisier. Sorry about that, but I need the comfort. Right, so we're going to add some flux. We're going to add some... Only 18 degrees C here. That's chilly. Ugh, yeah, so, I mean, I, what is it? It's, 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 get, it's getting close to, I think, 100 here in the whole Fahrenheit measure. For anyone there who's using the fifth. Uh, right here, just a reminder, I've talked about this before, little J18 on this board. Um, J18 is an interesting one because if you put the jumper across that, this computer will think it's a Quadra 605. If you take the jumper off, this computer will think it's an LC475. <laughs> well, how about that? There was a white-tailed spider on my desk yesterday. I sure hope he's gone. They're at one of the bitey spiders. See how beautiful these pads are coming up. Beautiful and shiny. So shiny. Oh, is this the one with the extra scent? This one really smells. And it's a sweet smell. It's not an unpleasant smell, but it's just... You know, it's like when you're, like, uh, I don't know, it's like those young guys that walk around with loads and loads and loads of Lynx aftershave on, or Lynx antiperspirant. <laughs> this thing is just coming up a trite. sent you the schematics for the 475 if you need to get into diagnostics. Yes, thank you very much for that, Kai. It's wonderful that all the schematics are starting to surface now uh, for these vintage Macs. I would like to think that in time we'll have all of them. I think, I'm, I'm hoping that one day Apple will just say, you know what, let's take a bit of pride in our history, people, 
There's no corporate secrets that people can steal from this. We're a company that's been around since 1976 or whenever it was. We're still going. We're still making hardware. People are collecting our old stuff because it is historically significant to the, you know, personal computing history. Why don't we allow people to have access to this to schematic so that they can help keep them going for longer? And it's not like they're competing with it or anything like that. It's not like I grab my Quadra 605 and uh, do my YouTube video editing on it, or editing on it or anything like that. Sparkly. I think they're all um, um, 47 microfarad 16 caps on this computer, all of the electrolytics. So um, PM9600, yeah. Which machine is this? No, it is not the 2SI. We, we got right down to the end there um, with the pole and we had equal on 605 and 2SI. And I was about to flip a coin, but I just said to everyone, look, if you haven't voted, get in there, do the tie break so that we know which one we're working on. And a couple more people got in there and voted and it put the six, uh, Quadra 605 in front. So we are doing the Quadra 605. I must admit, this one is probably the most boring out of the lot. Very, very dirty, sure. But it's actually in remarkably good condition. Um, the, like no apparent um, uh, corrosion or trace damage or anything. So I suspect... Once I get a couple of new caps on this, it's just going to fire up and we'll do a little dance. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? <laughs> the the Quadra 605 versus M2 Max benchmark. Now, of course, here's the problem with that. Um, I don't think there's any common benchmarking software that you can use. I don't think there's anything that actually runs on these old things that will run on the new things to provide you with um, uh, adequate benchmarking. Mm -hmm. Melty. Uh, now, the 2SI, which is another one of the ones that I did buy. Uh, so, I, look, I should say, straight off the bat, all of the Macs that I got from the barn have had their battery removed, apart from the LC580, which I'm not even going to bother. Well, I probably will bother working on. Why not? Um, but they have ha they've all had their batteries removed, so we're not likely to see any battery explosions on these. It's only going to be any corrosion that's just been caused from the way they've been stored. Um... And uh, the, else, uh, the 2SI, for anyone who is not familiar with the 2SI, they are a restoration job and a half. So what you'll generally find with the 2SI is, number one, uh, the floppy drives are usually stuffed, so you'll have to probably replace the eject mechanism in that, or the eject cog in that, and clean the heads and whatnot. Uh, number two, the power supplies have a very high failure rate um, of both the electrolytic capacitors and the, the through-hole electrolytics and surface mount. Yes, that's right. There are surface mount electrolytic caps inside the power supply of the 2SI uh, on a little daughter board that you have to desolder and then recap. So the 2SI has got a notoriously unreliable power supply. Then you've also got the logic board, and the logic board has got caps all over it. And the 2SI is one of the, the computers that if you fire it up, with dead caps, you can actually damage it. Uh, I've seen it happen on two. And if I see the same thing happen on two or more computers, I consider it a, uh, a, a trait. Um, and so the 2SI, if you've got very bad leaky caps, and they typically do, and then you fire it up, you can actually end up frying a little, a little um, uh, capacitor in the corner. So uh, don't, is what I'm basically saying. Don't. Just don't. Um, time for some new caps. Now, I should make mention of a little website that I have called Recap a Mac. It's not the best website in the world, but it is certainly one of the cleanest. Um, okay, there we go. I'm going to pop a link into the description. 
There you go, recap a Mac. And on that, I am going to then go to resources, the resources menu, scroll down to, what are we talking? We're talking around about 1993 for the Quadra 605. And it has, oh no, there is a 100. It's two 100, so let's put those on first. So we've got two 100 microfarad 6.3 volt and the rest are 4716. So we'll do the 200s first. 100, 6.3 volts, I've got plenty of those, plenty. And they are gonna go up here near the sound chip. That's the sound chip there, anyone's not familiar? 343S0129-01, you will find that code on a lot of these sound chips, except the 01 will sometimes be like 02 and sometimes A and sometimes B and stuff like that. But anyhow, they all seem to interchange with each other. They all seem to work with each other. I've got quite a few spares of those. Um, mm, 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 yeah. Sloppy, <laughs> <Born> sloppy. <laughs> ah, Dana did a typo. Dana did a typo. All right, so let's pop some flux onto here. We're all ready for soldering these on. Anyone has any queries or questions about soldering in general or surface mount soldering, always feel free to ask. I, uh, I do have a video on surface mount soldering. Some people really like it and some people don't. Um, if you're ever contemplating having a YouTube channel and making content that other people are gonna watch, just get ready for lots and lots of people to provide you with their opinion of all the things that you're doing wrong. Uh, a shout out to Christian, uh, also known as Fogwraith, uh, who is the man behind the Macintosh Garden website. Um, he has uh, apparently been receiving some sort of negative stuff about his Macintosh Garden website and it has been wearing him down a little and I just want to say a little shout out that we love you Christian and we love everything you do so don't listen to the haters <laughs> glad my auto correct amuses you does amuse me Question, Bruce. Most people seem to use D case tantalums. Would C case tantalums not fit better on pads designed for 6.3? You know what? Um, it probably would. <laughs> for me, it's become a funny thing now. I have some. I do have smaller size ones, and when I, it, 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 when it's practical, you know, like when when I'm in a situation where the big ones are, are too big, don't fit. For example, if I'm doing a recap on a uh, on a Sony. Uh, uh, caddy load cd-rom drive they actually have the cap so close together that i end up putting the smaller package size in there because it's a little bit easier but for me i have got so used to seeing these with the um with the d sized caps on them that when i see them with the c size they look wrong to me and they and 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 i go no 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 so it's kind of silly but, you know, yeah, look, I agree with you, Dana. I mean, what, um, um, you know, sort of what Christian does with that website is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it, it's just, it's so annoying that there are people out there that, you know, essentially contribute nothing other than complaining about what other people are doing. Um, and it just, it infuriates me. But anyhow, you kind of have to get used to it. So what have we got? We've got... 9.47. Jeez, that's a lot of caps, isn't it? That seemed like a lot of caps. I don't feel like I took nine off, but I guess I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh? Huh? Have I made a mistake? I sometimes make mistakes. Some, I think someone did tell me I, uh, I did something wrong on one of my recapping guides. Where's my, where's my webpage? Where's my webpage? Did I close it? What an idiot! I won't forget anything. Let's just go. Um, let's have a look. So I've said two 947s and two 100s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, no, there are. Oh, I've missed two. <laughs> two caps are still on here. Look at that. 
Look at this, look at this idiot here doing the recapping here and forgetting to take two caps off. What an asshole. Classic analog board had a mistake. Yeah, there was another one too. Someone, uh, someone else sent me a message the other day about another one with a mistake, um, which I have to resolve. Um, I, which I will. I will. I, I, I have days where I just go, yeah, it's time to do the website. Time to fix the website today. Sean Doe, is this live? Yes, it is. Sean from Action Retro is here. Hello there, Sean. Welcome. So, um, I'll just quickly fill you in, because Sean's very important, okay? So, I have to uh, give him uh, a bit of a recap of the situation, because he's so, he's so important. He is, okay? Um, so we, uh, I went to, oh, Melty, I melted some plastic. Uh, I went to a semi-rural part of Sydney to go and look at a whole bunch of Macs that were for sale and they were in terrible condition, stored in a barn and I, ow, I like to cut myself with a scalpel and I bought four Macs, five technically, but one of them I'm not even going to bother repairing. Um, and what we are doing is uh, I put a poll up to see which one people wanted me to work on first. Hello, Carthor. Uh, and, um, and the poll was a, uh, it was very, very close between the Quadra 605 and the Macintosh 2SI, but the Quadra 605 just won out at the end. So we are working on a Quadra 605 here, recapping it um, at this stage. If you saw how bad this thing looked, uh, this board is actually in remarkably good condition. Uh, we've got a lot of rust on all the internal metal of the uh, of the chassis of the case, but the board itself, after a bit of dusting, didn't look too bad. And I think after an ultrasonic clean, the thing will look near neo. Neo. That's so neo. Okay, just checking everyone here. Ba 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 ba. Boy, it's still, it is really hot here, by the way. Really hot. Um, I should be inside the house with all that beautiful air conditioning, but I'm here doing this for the love of it and to spend time with you good folks. Right, so now we've actually got this done properly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There should be a ninth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got them all. It's all good. Everyone can relax. It's a fine. Now in my last live stream where I was doing uh, a building a kit, I was using some little multimeter tweezers and I realized that I had not a link in my description on uh, where the multimeter tweezers can be purchased from, you know, what model they are and where you can buy them. So that has been resolved. You will now find in the description a link to these little uh, DT71 um, multimeter tweezers. So I'll just uh, go here to the... Oops, no, that's not what I wanted. Top view. So this is they. They are a pair of tweezers that are also a multimeter. And it's sort of a smart multimeter. Uh, I can set it to that's diode, that's capacitor. So I can get my little capacitor here. I can hold him thusly, and he can go. He's showing at the moment 51 microfarad. It's a 47, so I think we're probably still in spec. 49, 47, 48. Yeah. So we're 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 doing good. So anyhow, these are these can be quite handy for certain purposes. Sometimes they're an absolute pain in the ass, but, you know, for a lot of things, they can actually be very nifty little things. So uh, the mechanism itself is just that. That's it. That's it there. And then and that is a battery uh, and the tweezers. So nifty stuff, eh? 
It's version 1.07 or something. There's probably been a firmware update to those. Let's stick some caps on, shall we? Stop uh, all this rabbiting on. <laughs> and so uh, now that Sean from Action Retro is here, I can let everyone know that when I finish recapping it, I'm going to load Linux on it. This is not true. This is not true. I can't, I really can't back that up. Okay, I used the uh, little frog find website in my latest uh, YouTube video that hasn't been released yet, it will be released soon, but if you are a member of the Tinker Different community, and you have a look at the PowerPC challenge thread, you'll get a link to see an early release of that video that I made. <coughs> and I was getting an old computer onto the interwebs, and I used the old frog find website to, uh, to check and see that everything was working. Shenanigans. Yes, I know. I think essentially that word is... That's taken now, isn't it? I don't think anyone can even use that word anymore. That's, that's Sean's property. I think I even did use it in one of my videos very briefly. I said it once and then when I watched the video back I felt dirty. Like, oh, I can't use that word. I always try and get these on as straight as possible. They don't have to be straight. They can be as crooked as you like. But I just find that when I look at the board afterwards, if I see a crooked cap, it just, my eyes drawn to it. I'm like, oh. Fingers crossed for the first boot. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining Kai. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about this one, so... But anyhow, yeah, fingers crossed. It's always good to keep the fingers crossed. Rabbit, rabbit. Um, oh, yes, I, I, sh I haven't done this in a while, so I'm going to do this one. Smash that like button. Did I scare anyone? <clears throat> Smash that like button. Damn, I'm good looking. That's from, uh, I don't actually believe that, but that's from, um, oh, what's that show, that game called Duke Nukem 3D. Gotta love it, eh? Love that game. There's a release of that that actually runs natively on an M, you know, at Apple Silicon Mac. And I, was, I was playing that the other day, you know, full screen 3D graphics. You know, sort of like 50 frames a second looks absolutely magnificent. Uh, just so, um, so much fun to do that. Um, same with Doom. Uh, yeah, there's a, a Apple Silicon native Doom that you can run. Uh, and, oh, and if anyone likes the Mist games, the, the actual game Mist, um, a couple of years ago, I think it is now, Cyan released... A, an Unreal Engine version of Mist, and the graphics are just sumptuous. What's the name of that restaurant with all the goofy stuff on the wall and the deep fried food? Uh, I, I, I think someone will have to answer that, I don't know. What about us who prefer the game? Well, it wasn't really a game pissed or as they said in it pissed um, it wasn't a game it was just a series of screenshots and it is uh, pretty stupid uh, actually I do have it pissed P-Y-S-T but it's not actually something I consider worth loading on your computer it is a waste of space, in my opinion. I didn't get this quite straight, so... We'll have to remedy that. Alright, now I've got to get some solder right down here, and I need to have the soldering iron going straight up and down for that, so... 
right at this moment I'm not going to use a scope so we'll just go top view and then I will change my spectacles oh I didn't bring I, I cleaned them but I didn't bring them back down with me what a dumbass <laughs> so I'm doing this pretty much blind these glasses that I'm wearing are good for some distances, but not for the real close-up work. All right, let's have a look and see how that went. Old man's good enough for rock and roll. There we go. Look at those. They're soldered. I'm fine with that. You hear birds singing. Yes, there are lots of birds singing. There's even a bird on the roof of this workshop. They are probably pigeons. The birds you're hearing singing over there actually sound... Most of them sound like uh, uh, the introduced um, Indian miner. Very noisy and very pest and very shouldn't be here. Um, it's because it's so hot, the birds get a little bit funny. Um, they kind of start, they behave a little bit weird when it's this hot. How are the chickens today? Look, I'll just, we're just going to jump across and have a look at the chickens, seeing as it's mentioned. Um, so, you can see no chickens. Now, the reason why you can see no chickens is I think there might have been a predator about earlier. And they are all off to the left. You can't see, see all, you see all these overhanging ferns that we've got here. Well, there's a, there's a lot more of them across to the left there. And the chickens hide under them because, you know, chickens, you know, they, they, they are used to living in sort of natively they would live in sort of scrub you know where they can get shelter from above and yeah and i think there must have been a predator because they have been sitting in the corner there for some hours now um so they're just you know keeping themselves safe they're pretty safe from most predators here apart from foxes but um but i've i have not had any foxes here they're in australia they're just i haven't had them in this area um but the the chooks are going well uh, scope view. There we go. Hot. Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> uh, and incidentally, apparently uh, they are also, in the coming years, going to be releasing Riven using the Unreal Engine. So anyone who has played Riven before will know that they have those beautiful graphics, but ultimately they are still framed. So if you're facing that way, it's a still frame. And you turn that way, it's still frame. You turn that way, it's still frame. Whereas they're going to be bringing it out as a Unreal Engine type zooming around, seeing everything. And I cannot wait for that because Riven, I think, is one of the most graphically beautiful games ever made. Every single frame of that is a, is a work of art. Love it. Love it. I, I mean, that I was, I have been into 3D modeling for a very long time, but seeing that game as someone who, who had, you know, an interest in 3D modeling just found it so beautiful. Um, the, the original game Mist was made on software called Strata. Um, Strata 3D or Strata Studio was because it went through a whole bunch of different names throughout its time and when Mist did incredibly well the company Strata were like we should get in on this they're using our software to make all this money by selling games what are we doing so the company Strata actually ended up setting up their own company called Mojave very hard to find it these days because if you search for Mojave, all the stuff that comes up is about the Apple operating system. But there was a company um, called Mojave which made two games. While well, one was sort of more of a, a visual story, you know, like a like a like a kind of like a comic book come to life type thing with 3D and stuff. The other one was a game, and the game was called Secrets of the Luxor which I have and have played and like. Uh, and as I say, it was all made with Strata. But I just find that quite interesting that the company that made the software for Mist ended up going, hey, I want to get on the action. Um, and uh, yeah, so they didn't last very long. 
Um, there, it was obviously their intention to release a whole bunch of games, but I just don't think uh, Secrets of the Luxor did terribly well. By the time it was released, that genre of game had actually advanced a lot. They were making much more sophisticated versions of the games with better graphics, taking up more of the screen, um, you know, more stuff going on. Some of the puzzles in Secrets of the Luxor are brilliant. Um, I do like playing it. But, uh, but yeah, I just didn't, I just don't think it sold very well. I actually love those sorts of games. I play them all the time. Uh, yeah, uh, Prototype was, uh, it was Prototype, you will, uh, yeah, that's right. So, so Mist basically does run on Hypercard, it's my understanding. And you can actually see that at times. Because I've had instances where I, it's had a fault and it's kind of gone into the Hypercard kind of framework type thing. Um, and of course, Hypercard was an amazing thing. It was a fantastic thing. It really was way ahead of its time, but probably it was a level of complexity that kept it out of the, the, the hands of, of less tech savvy people, you know, um, <laughs> and of course, Mist also ran into a lot of problems that were related to the speed of CDs at the time, because CDs were running at, you know, we, we all know later computers, you had speed e CDs that were like 50 times and all that sort of stuff. Well, the original CDs were one times. That was it. Uh, if you wanted to get the data off it, that was the fastest that the drive would go. And I had issues where, you know, how long can, do people wait? How long will people be prepared to wait for graphics to load up? Game engine called Mohawk. There you go. There's a doco, I think, on Mist, which I should watch. I think I've seen bits of it. Which is why I'm able to spout little bits of information, but not necessarily the whole story. Right, well, that was... Oh, what happened to my camera? I went side view instead of scope view. Sorry about that, people. You missed out the last little blob of solder. Oh my god, that's crooked. Can't be having a crooked uh, cap. When I do have a crooked cap like this, what I will usually do is I'll just melt one side and then I'll bend it. Don't bend it too hard. Oop. Bend it, bend it, hold it there, let it dry. Then I'll melt this side. Damn, this is bad. I gotta. I actually need to bend it this way because it's 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 it needs to line up with the other one. So I just do it one side at a time, like that. That'll do. That's all right, isn't it? We're all good with that. We're all friends here. All right. Have a look. Let's see what it looks like. Favorite games on Mac are Escape Velocity, Marathon, You Don't Know Jack, Sim City, Come Again the Cop. The Come again the car apocalypse and Doom 2. Yeah, so look, I would definitely agree with some of those. I, ha I, I, I've, I have, but I've hardly played. You don't know Jack, um, but for me, I love all of the Mist style games. So some of my favourites of those are Mist, Riven. I enjoy Secrets of the Luxor. There's one called uh, Zork Nemesis. Love that one, um, and. They're probably the main ones. Uh, I love Doom 2. I love... I mean, I, I played... I spent hours playing that. I love Duke Nukem 3D. I love... Um, um, num, num, uh, Civilization. Uh, probably Civilization 1 is my favourite. I like Civ 2 as well, but I think Civ 1 is probably my favourite. Uh, I just love playing that. Um, and... SimCity I did used to play a fair bit of. Yeah, I'm actually working on a game. I mean, sorry, working on a game. Working on a video for that, and I actually list my top ten. So I'm going to just bring that list up now because I wrote a script for this. It's not finished yet. 
I've started working on this video, but I was basically going to release my top 10 favorite OS 9 games. That was it. Fav my 10 favorite OS 9 games. And I listed them as uh, Civilization, Warcraft 2, Doom 2, Nuke Duke Nukem 3D, Carmageddon, the original one. I like Carmageddon 2 as well, but I preferred the first Carmageddon. Mist, Zork Nemesis, Secrets of the Luxor, Time Lapse, that was the other one, and Riven. So now you don't have to watch the video, I've told you them all. But anyhow, I'll be doing little bits on them in the video. Um, so that's coming as well. That's about probably 30% done. Um, Doom was so ahead of its time it was. And actually, this is an interesting, interesting thing with this rewrite of Doom, which you can run on native uh, Apple hardware now, uh, you know, the, the Apple Silicon, uh, you can... Um, uh, they've made it so that the monsters are now three-dimensional rather than just being a, a front-on thing that, you know, like a, a flat thing that if you move around it, it stays flat, uh, which is kind of is kind of cool that they've done that. Right, now, this is the Quadra 605. We are going to give it a test run just to see if we get a chime. This is a known good power supply, so I'm going to use this to start off with. We can try the other power supply later on. But this is a known good one. That is off. I'm going to hunt around and see if I can find a cable. Here it is. I've got stored in this cable 240 of the of Australia's finest volts. And we're going to plug that in. And let's get some RAM and some VRAM in here. Because I think this needs VRAM to boot. I think. But we'll put it on anyway. Doom became an overnight phenomenon. Yes, it's interesting because at the time that... Oh my god, look at that. Look at the gunk on this video RAM. Um, at the time, it's like a um, Hornets sort of tried to lay an egg there or something. Um, at the time that it came out, it was when there was still a lot of computers just running DOS. There was DOS, but there was obviously uh, Windows 95 was starting to come out. But there was a time in the 90s, I don't remember when, where apparently there was, there were more copies of Doom on computers than there were Windows 95, so, yeah, because they made, it was just that, such a clever thing that the, they released it with a couple of, um, a couple of levels for free, I think, I can't remember how many levels there were, and what a smart move that was, just get people hooked, okay. There's my 32 megs of RAM. This does have, I think it's four on board. Yes, that's right, because when you put the 32 in, you end up with 36. So four megabytes on the board, 32 in there, couple of 256 VRAMs. We're just testing for Chime at this stage. If that works, I will then go and get a screen and we'll do some further testing. Plug that in there to the speaker. Now, of course, if this doesn't work, the very next thing I would do before doing anything would be ultrasonically clean it because the guns on this could be a uh, uh, you know, cause of all sorts of problems. This speaker is not in the best condition, so it's not very loud. So you I might have to just tell you whether it's working or not. Okay, we're ready. Three and a two and a one. Ha! Ha! I don't know if you heard that, but it chimed. Ha! <laughs> oh, incidentally, this little thing here is a spot for a ROM sim slot uh, and I think someone has actually made some ROMs for these but you've got to put the slot in so yeah that's good that worked um, now I need to go get a screen so that we can actually see what's coming out of it so if you guys wouldn't mind just being patient just get onto your volume control because I'm about to put the back soon little splash screen thingy up uh, and, uh, and it's a little bit louder than my voice, I think. So just be aware, hands on the volume knob, especially if you've got headphones. I'll get a drink while I'm up too, because I'm parched. It's 39 degrees at the moment, so that's about 100 in the oof. Okay, uh, back soon.
Hello. Ah, <sighs> wow. So, Great Northern super crisp lager time. Is the Great Northern the one that's a low alcohol one? I think Great Northern's, it's like a, a kind of mid-strength beer or something like that. Correct me if I am wrong, Enzo. I've actually got some, uh, what do you call them, uh, 150 lashes, James Squire 150 lashes in the fridge I think I'll have today. Today's definitely a nice beer day with the heat. The heat. <coughs> right. Uh, my apologies to everyone for my uh, bellicosity. No, for being uh, away there for a little bit. I probably should have been prepared and, uh, and had the screen ready to go. I do actually have a VGA thing that I can plug in and, and make the VGA signal go to the computer. I'm not sure how well my computer will like that because that then becomes five separate inputs. I've got four cameras rigged up to this and if I have a fifth, I, I, things might just stop working. So, um, so anyhow, what we're going to do is we'll switch this on now and see what happens. I may have the settings wrong on this little adapter so I'll have to check. Uh, uh, it's, hang on. What have I done? Was that it? Was, is that all? It's, it's, that's 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 the extent of its working. Oh no, it charmed. Okay. So sorry, Davros. I knocked Davros over. It's got 32 megs of RAM. It does take quite a while to do a RAM check on this. I can say that for sure, because I've been mucking around with the Quadra 6, um, 605 quite a bit lately. So we'll give it a chance to have a good old think of its RAM. And then if that, that green light, this red there should change to green. If it does not change to green, I'll just check my adapter settings here, because I could have them on the wrong settings. Uh, what's your chicken brine recipe and how long do you soak the chook for? Well, and what is it? It's about... Is it like one teaspoon per litre or something like that? I can't remember. I generally look that stuff up. Um, the uh, And yeah, the, the longer the better usually. If you like overnight, it's good. Okay, uh, what are we doing? 13 inch. So we go one and two on. Because the other thing with brining is that you sometimes... Uh, you brine, you can do a light brine or a heavy brine, so it depends on, you know, how brined you want it to be. I'm, I, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go get my other adapter. I've got a different adapter, which, which sort of kind of works on everything, so everything Mac anyway. I'll go get that one, and then we'll test that one. I probably should just take the 32 out, shouldn't I? So then we don't have to sit here and wait for the memory. Have you ever damaged known good hardware by plugging in untested boards? It's hard to really know that. It's hard to know whether you were responsible for... If you've plugged it in and it doesn't work, do, how do you know whether you've damaged it or not or whether it was already damaged? It's just impossible to know. I'll go get the other adapter. So sit tight, people. I'll do the back soon again. This will only take me a sec because I know exactly where it is. Right, 
so let's try this other adapter. Of course, I may not be getting a, an image on this. I may not be getting video. That's always possible. These VRAM sims could be stuffed. I, oh, jeez, I should have brought the VRAM sims down from the other one. What an idiot. Idiot. I'm probably going to have to go back up there again if this doesn't work. Okay, I've taken the RAM out, but I've left the VRAM in. I'll just check that I've got this on the right source. HDMI, AV1, AV2, VGA. VGA is the source we want it to be on. There we go, no signal. We're not giving up on it yet, no siree. Might have some VRAM here. Boo, ba doo, boo. <laughs> Let's check for computers with VRAM. None there, none there. I've got to have some here, like in a little baggie or something. Yeah, there's a baggie. Nope. Nope. Everything is upstairs. So I'm just going to gradually bring all of the house down here, one piece at a time. What's this one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All the VRAM is gone. All right. I'm going back. And given the state of this VRAM, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's unhappy. Uh, and I do know that this computer, because I tested it before, does not work without the VRAM. And then of course, if it still doesn't work, the next thing we'll be doing is ultrasonically cleaning it. And that will probably fix it up. So, instead of going back soon, I'll just take you with me. Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right. Phew. How's everyone going? Sorry about all this stopping and starting. Anyone still watching? People probably all disappeared after all that. Getting some heat to the CPU there. Still here, good, 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 good. It is a magical toothbrush. And it is not the toothbrush I use to clean my teeth with. Okay, I've got a couple of 512 VRAM sims here. I'm gonna try with those and see if we get a visuals. And three, two, one. Another chime. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, yuck, what is that? Okay, it doesn't look like we're getting a picture on this one, which is a little bit disappointing, but not overly surprising. And nor do I actually think it's gonna take much to get a picture. I really think this is just going to be a matter of cleaning it. Um, I might even be able to just do a little bit of cleaning here now. And, 
And who knows? There's definitely heat coming from that CPU. Uh, the other thing I will do, of course, is connect up a, uh, a blue C uh, and see if we get some blinking lights to see whether it is actually booting, even if we're not getting a picture. And as Kai pointed out before, there are uh, schematics of the LC475 available. So I might uh, reseat the 68040 CPU as well and just check around the pins of these little guys here. I uh, got here a while ago from your soldering beginner series. This is really fascinating. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, when I'm doing these live streams where I'm working on something, I'm either building a kit or if I'm uh, trying to repair a piece of vintage computer equipment, uh, I'm always, I always invite people to, in the chat, just sort of feel free to talk about this stuff or ask questions about anything. Um, and, uh, but most importantly, I mean, I'm tr I just always try and keep them sort of light and fun. So uh, um, just to have me going on in the background, you know, while you do important things. So these chips here have these incredibly thin little pins you can see. And what often happens with these, in particular ones that if they've been a bit mistreated, sometimes you can end up with one of these just kind of bending like that and touching another pin next to it. So that's something I always look out for when it comes to these vintage Macs. Make sure that those pins aren't bending and touching each other. Can't have touching, no touching. Okay, looking good. And yeah, I'm just going to lift out the CPU and pop it in again because just based on the state of this computer, I mean, who knows? There could be things living under it. I've got a special tool that I use for prying these things out, but I can't find it. So I'll just have to get creative. Oops, let's go to the top here, shall we? Yeah, no one wants to watch a pin getting bent, do they? It's quite satisfying getting one, a bent one, you know, watching it getting straightened. But watching someone deliberately bend a pin, it's like, hey, oh, ah. Uh, these, the pins on these 68040 chips bend so easily. I mean, like, crazy easily so just if you do get these out uh, I don't know, stab them into some foam or something like that because uh, I trust me if you just leave these lying around you'll come back and they'll have loads and loads of bed pins okay right so we've done a little bit of cleaning here piss off piss off piss off piss off so there's a flying thing flying around me and I don't want him uh, okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, go back to this adapter, and that's the one and two, so that's 13 inch, that's 16, 640 by 480, yep, cool. Mm. Uh, like speakers, fine screwdrivers, yep. <laughs> Alright, let's plug them in. Try them again. And of course, if we don't get anywhere... Oh, that's right, the next thing I'm going to do is just see if it's trying to boot. As in load data from a hard drive. What did I do? Ah. 
have I made it work less? I do believe I have made it work less. It's not even doing a pop on the speaker anymore. Uh, you know what I do need to do? I need to get the fan, which I put somewhere. Where'd I put the fan? Oh, here it is. Because this at least tells me if it's switching on, doesn't it? Fan. All right, what have I done? What have I done? You cannot tell me that it is completely dead now. It's just not possible. I refuse to believe it. It's like completely dead now. What have I done? I've done something stupid is what I've done. But I just don't know what it is that I've done that's stupid. I mean, am I getting power out of this thing here? <laughs> yeah, I blame Rock K as well. Mm -hmm. Need a multimeter. I know I've got one here. I know I've got two here. Under stuff. There we go. Here's one. Closest one. Mm, and let's put this onto AC. And then we'll get these things and we'll shove them in here. Oh, they're not going to fit in there, are they? Sons of guns. Get another multimeter. Here's another multimeter. Kai Weeks, KM601, smart digital multimeter. Okay, that is DC volts. We want AC volts. There we go. That's 200 volts. It's not right. Where's, where's all the extra volts going? That's very weird. We normally would be getting 220 plus. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm not going to lose too much sleep because uh, it should be enough for a power supply like this, which can accept between 100 and 240 volts. What have I done? I haven't done enough, I think, to have broken it. I, I, I mean, unless I, like, bent a pin when I was putting this back on. I mean, I know I bent that pin, but I bent it back again. Did the power supply die? It's always possible. Do we want to fire up the power supply that came with it? The one from the barn? I mean, it could end the stream immediately because um, if, if it blows a fuse... <laughs> No, all the strings, strings, the, the pins are straight. The strings are pate. What's going on with that string? Wow. There's a damaged pin there. It should still work though. Need my little pin straightener tweezers. I've got tweezers that work really well for pin straightening. Ugh. See this one here? It's, I know it's not particularly good with the camera, but see that one there? It's sort of bent a bit.
I do have a spare one of these if I break this. Does it chime if you remove the screen cable and adapter? I will I will find that out. I, I need to remove it anyway so I can get to this. Here we go. Okay. CPU back on. Plug the power in. And switch it on. No, it is as dead as a doornail. That is so weird. So weird. Uh, oh, actually, you know what I really should do? I should test if there's any power coming out of the power supply. We have the tools. We have the technology. Let's change this to DC voltage. There we go. I hope everyone can see that lovely big screen. Uh, we've got uh, a little pin on the Negatoro there, and we'll go there. Zero. 0.6. I think we've got a a power supply that has just died itself. Huh. You know what that means though, don't you? It means we have to try the power supply that came with it. Um, before I do something stupid, or, or before I get too carried away, I just want to check and see that there is definitely power coming out of this that allows me to say, for example, fire up my soldering iron. Yep. Soldering iron working, so definitely power coming out of that. All right. That power supply was working. I mean, it really was. You just have to take my word for it. Now, this is, this is the fun bit that we're going to try now. We're going to try, I've got another one of these power supplies up in the house, so I can go and get that if worst comes to the worst, but I don't know if it works, but I do have another one. Yeah. Come on. All right. Now, who likes living dangerously? This is the power supply that came with the computer. What do you want to do? Shall we just try and fire it up? Does anyone dare me? Naughty power supply. I will test that power supply with a different computer to see if it's the computer doing something All right. All right. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. You ready? Three, two, one. Okay, nothing happened. I mean, we're still alive. That's the important thing. Not getting any volts out of it there which is sort of making me start to think it's the board creating the problem with it's not the power supply maybe there's a short on here something like that um you know there's if it's if there's a short circuit on here somewhere it could well be you know not firing up uh if i put my ear close to it maybe it's ticking or something like that because that's often a sign of a short if it's ticking It's, you know, it's just curious because we were in a situation with it, this where it was working, <laughs> sort of working, firing up, chiming, uh, and then we went to a situation where it's kind of like dead now. Uh, and all I really did in between it was run over it with a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. Now, of course, I could have damaged it while I was doing that. 
but I wouldn't have thought I would damage it to the point where it just was dead, you know. Um, just going to have a look. A little bit of an inspection a -rooney. Oh wow, there's a chip out of that. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Just seeing if my toothbrush cleaning could have uh, done some lemmy. Make it happier. Yeah, it is sad. It's not working. What, it's, I'll tell you what you missed, Steve. You missed it chiming and then not chiming. Now it's completely dead. Like deader than, deader than, deader than flared trousers. Uh, but I need to get a few more bits and pieces so that I can properly diagnostics. Okay, chimed. So whatever chicanery was going on, it's uh, it's it's kind of self-resolved. So let's just let's just say that's we'll call that luck, shan't we? Yeah. All right. So trying again. So we've got a video display, uh, also known as a monitor, connected uh, to this, and we're going to fire it up. And see if we can get an image. So far we haven't been able to get any video. And that's basically where we started to run into strife. Because I started cleaning things with a toothbrush. And then when I went to go plug it in again it didn't switch on. But now, now, it seems to be working. But, of course, we're not getting any video. Uh, and to that, I am not... Yeah, look, I, I, I'm not going to put out any ruling on this computer until I have had a chance to um, ultrasonically clean it. Because it could be that simple. Oh, crap. Oh, fudge. I, I had an SD card for this. Oh, it's there. <laughs> All right. Um... I want to plug the SCSI in, and we'll just see if it's powering the SCSI. SCSI is powered. And then we'll see if this attempts to do some bootage. I don't think it will, because in my experience with these, if you're not getting a video signal, it's you're not going to end up booting. It's, this is just going to sit here dead. Dead. I think I need cooling more than the computer does. Okay, so it, it's not, it would have started booting by now if it was working. So, so uh, the next step for this one is going to be ultrasonic cleaning. I'm going to do that before I do any other... Whoop. Did you see it blink? I saw it blink. Blink, didn't it? It's not booting though. And if it was going to boot, it would start going flicker, 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 flicker. Oh, unless, of course, it's got an operating system that it doesn't like. It's always possible. Because I don't, I have no idea what's on that SD card. It's got disk images on it because otherwise it would be flashing. But it could be a disk image like for a way later computer, for a way earlier computer. So I don't know what disk image is on it. I'm doing my best um, uh, early Sean from Action Retro impression here, where he used to do everything with the hands. But of course now he's got a fancy studio and he can film his whole face. It's crazy. 
39 here. It's lovely. It does have VRAM in there. Uh, that's there. I've got two 512s. Um, I tried it with the 32 meg and now I'm just trying to boot it from the 4 on the board. Uh, not booting. It's basically not booting. We're not getting anything to the... No video, no murmuring on the SCSI, really. Um, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, um, uh, mm. Well, I think ultimately what I need to do at this stage is to um, just put this aside for ultrasonic cleaning and then we'll have a look afterwards. Now generally whenever I am doing a live stream like this and I end up with something that's kind of not working at the end of it, I will typically um, uh, post uh, updates either in the community section of my YouTube channel or uh, I will sometimes do a little video or something like that or I will post them on my Facebook page so uh, if you're subscribed to me you should get a notification if I do one on the uh, YouTube community section I will typically do a little video showing something working and going hey where you go um, so what I'm going to do now we're going to put this to one side and I am going to go and grab the 2SI now I'm not necessarily going to go in and fully recap it or anything like that but we're at least going to have a crack, excuse me, at least going to have a crack at uh, seeing if it'll start up without any anything being done to it, even though I specifically said you should never do that with a 2SI. Always thinking. All right, so I'm going to head up and grab the 2SI. So, uh, did a replay and it blinked, it did blink. So, what it could have done there is it could have um, looked on that disk on that SD card and found a disk image, but it wasn't a disk image it liked, and so it could have just come up with a sad Mac or a flashing question mark or a cross, uh, something like that. Um, but anyhow, as I say, I, I I just don't want to do much more to it until I've uh, it's had, had some quality time in the ultrasonic cleaner, which I should switch on now actually. Switching on the ultrasonic cleaner. Come on, oh, fat hand. There we go. Won't need much to uh, heat up the uh, water today. <laughs> okay, heading up to get a 2SI. Where am I going to put it? I don't know where to put it. Ugh. It's on the bottom. It would be on the bottom, wouldn't it? Two mm. SI has the network card. Isn't that nice? Hot, 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 hot. hot. Mm. Ooh, something bouncing around inside it. Oopsie. Okay. 2SI. Whew. Hot. This is... Depending on... I don't know if you're in, anyone out there is in a part of the world that gets this hot. But this is the sort of heat that, you know, really knocks you around. It's just like a... It's a water like burns your face when you step out into it. Oy. Oy. Okay, let's zoom out a little for this bit. I feel warm just hearing about it. <laughs> Thank you for your sympathetic uh, heating there, Steve. Okay, 2SI. Is there meant to be a shield there? Well, if there is, it's not there. Now the 2SI doesn't have the brittle plastics like the others do. Original 40 hard drive in there. Uh, battery removed. There's the power supply, there's the fan. Here's a little network card. And there's this, this has got a little spot for a uh, floating point unit by the looks of it. But it's a socketed one ra rather than a um, PLCC one. Um, so let's just disconnect that. Let's unplug that and let's have a little look at it. 
Dana Communications. Hello, Dana. Shout out to Dana Does Stuff. <laughs> I bet the power supply works great, yeah. We won't be using that, I can tell you that for sure. Um, crystals aren't covered in rust, I know. It's extraordinary. Extraordinary. So, anyhow, uh, that's the... Uh, that's the network card, so that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of rust on the back of the network card, unfortunately. Now we've got to get this power supply out. Now, I've always found these a bit of an enigma, because you need to get the power supply out to get the fan out, but you need to get the fan out to get the power supply out. And I just wonder which, who is the idiot who designed this so that that is the case? Who? All right, so if we get that in there, It's not screwed in or something, is it? No. There is an option for it to be screwed in. There's a little screw hole there. But it's not screwed in. So we're fine. Okay. It's not Davros's fault. Where is Davros? There he is. Davros is helping. Son of a gun! I don't know why this is giving me so much grief. Why? Here she comes. There's the power supply. That, I promise you, is garbage inside, but probably repairable. Prolly, prolly, prolly. And the fan, you kind of squeeze it down the bottom. Squeeze, and then it comes up. Here's our little fan. Uh, really interesting thing about the 2SI, the 2SI does not have um, termination power. So if you're someone with a Blue SCSI or SCSI 2SD or Zulu SCSI or any of those and you're planning to power it off the termination power, yeah, out of luck. Can't do it. I don't want to take the hard drive out. I'm just telling you, board, I don't want to take the hard drive out, but you're going to make me, aren't you? Son of a gun. I don't want to take the floppy drive out. I, I am curious as to whether I'll be able to get these hard drives up and running again, given the fact that they're the originals. There might be some interesting data on there. Mind you, I never find interesting data on them. I find stupid things on them. Steve finds interesting things on, on floppies. Ugh, this is terrible. Shall we have a look at this under the microscope? Underside's nice. Okay. Oh, this one's had a, a capacitor fall off. Right there. That's, there should be a capacitor there at C38, but there ain't. Um, mm, maybe. It's a maybe. Bit of green here. It's a bit of green amongst friends, eh? So right here we've got the ROM chips. There's ROM chip number one. 
He's still soldered. And here's ROM number two. This is this is so crusty. Quadra six oh five was in mint condition compared to this. Mint, I tell you. There's our little sound chips. Uh, got some caps on here. So I'm going to do something really stupid, uh, you know, only because it's a live stream, so that's what we do. And that stupid thing I'm going to do is, I, I'm actually going to try and um, power this up, but I will put on a capacitor where this capacitor's fallen off. Uh. Removed all the maple syrup from my two SIPSUs. Uh, do you, yes, I do plan selling them. So, uh, not necessarily all of them. So, this is answering Apollo's question. Do you plan on selling these if, when they're functional and just mess, or, or just messing around with them? Now, the thing is that most of these computers I already have at least one of. I have, I have one two SI. I think I don't. I've got two two SI cases that have nothing in them. But I've got I've got one fully functional 2SI that's been overclocked. Um, I've got a Quadra 605, pretty badly damaged case, but still works. I've got two LC2s, might even be three of them actually, and I've got two LC3s. Uh, I don't need any more of those, so I will probably end up selling them if and when I get them working, um, because well, a couple of reasons. One, I can recoup the money of buying these in the first place because I did pay money for them. Ah, look at that. What's well, a bit of trace damage between friends, eh? Let's see if this has continuity with all that corrosion on it. Um, yeah, so I recoup some money for buying them in the first place, but the other thing is that, um, you know, there are a lot of collectors, a lot of vintage computer collectors, and I think it's a little bit mean to just hold on to too many of them, because it means that you're stopping other people from getting into the competition, I mean, co into the um, the uh, community and, and collecting and stuff. So if there are more of them out there, yep, still got community, still got, jeez, I'm having trouble with words today, uh, still got continuity on that, even though um, it looks like shh. Shivers. Right, now I want to show you the magic here, the magic of restoration with these. I am going to put on um, some a fair modicum of flux here. And I'm going to get some heat. I'm going to get some solder. Um, so... One of the reasons why I really like doing this stuff with Vintage Max, and I mentioned this a little bit before, is because um, a Apple had a design kind of um, thing going on. I mean, when Apple, Apple were always a premium product. Apple always sold their computers for, they were typically more expensive than the competition, but they were sold as a premium product, made better, whether they were or not, it's irrelevant, but they were, you know, saying they were made better, um, better operating system, again, I'm talking about their marketing side of here, whether you believe that or not, it's up to you. Um, and and design, they were always making these things slick, make it so that the monitors match the bottoms and everything like that, and you know make the, match the cases and and really nice keyboards and all that sort of stuff. So it was all about um, you know it's about this being a premium product. And what that has done, that's left a sort of a legacy that you've got all of these computers, these vintage computers that have this style about them. 
Now, it's not today's style. It's then style. It's 1980s, 1990s style, you know. But it's still a style, and, and that's something... I mean, if you're looking at collecting, say, old grey box PCs, well, they just all look the same. Whereas I can look at this 2SI, and I can get the 12-inch monitor that came with it, put it on top, and they just look so slick as, like, a, a set. You know, they look made to go with each other. Uh, and I just um, that is one of the reasons why I, um, I really do like collecting these, because they have a, a definite style about them, a real look. Uh, now I've got basically using solder here, I'm using flux, I'm using heat and rubbing, and I'm just rubbing, 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 and eventually we turn these pads into things that can hold solder, as we can actually see now. You can see the solder's staying on there. And then I just need to get some wick and do a final clean, and then this will be ready for a capacitor. Look how clean these pads have come up, folks. Eh? Eh? Who would have thunk it? That, my friends, is restoration. Okay, now I'm going to go to my Recapper Mac website, which uh, is on the interwebs. A lot of cool stuff on the internet. Uh, we'll go to recap of that. Excuse me, bit of a boop. Just boop. Um, and I'm going to go to 2SI. Uh, interestingly enough, the 2SI was a computer that was theoretically meant to replace the 2CI, uh, but the 2CI was just still selling brilliantly. Uh, and so they ended up just selling them in tandem. So you could buy the 2SI as a slightly cheaper version of the 2CI. 2SI only had one expansion slot. 2CI has three. Uh, 2CI has eight memory slots. This only has four. Uh, this was originally going to come out as a 25 megahertz computer, but it, they ended up selling it as a 20 megahertz. They slowed it down so that it wouldn't compete as much with the 2CI, so they could keep selling the 2CI. Uh, okay, so that one there is a 4716. I am running desperately low in um, 4716s. I'm going to have to buy some more. Uh, shove the button. Uh, I'm also running desperately low in space. Space. Uh, so we'll pop a little 47. 16 here at least so it's got a cap on there now don't be too surprised if I send power to this and this little cap explodes okay so if it does you know joy all around because everyone likes things exploding everyone sort of always talks about how much they like things exploding um, oh you know the problem I have with this the speaker I can't just plug a speaker into this so we won't hear it chime Unless I put it in the case. Ass hat. Two SI first Mac. It's good Mac to have as a first Mac. Because and, and, and beautiful style. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so how do we check and see if this is working? I suppose we can plug in a monitor. Um, it doesn't even have an LED light, does it? At least the 2CI has an LED light. Hmm. So I'll have to plug in a monitor with... This is a sync on green one, so... Oh god, that's so freaking rusty. <laughs> uh, um, we need a power supply. Uh, Top view, top view. Okay, there's a power supply.
and then we'll get our screen which I put somewhere up here now with these when they don't work they will typically just give you a white screen and nothing else for anyone who's familiar with the SE30 if they have ever heard of the SEMA CMAC pattern well the SEMA CMAC pattern on a 2SI is basically just a white screen so let's see what we get Okay, so I've got that plugged in, got a power supply here, got this here, 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 and we're going to try and switch it on. Are we ready? Oh, is everyone ready for this? Because it could actually blow up. Um, you know, I mean, it re I mean, really could blow up. Like, pop. Okay, so you ready? Three, two, one. Holy crap! Well, it's outputting video, uh, but we are getting the white screen of death here. So this is, as I've mentioned before, this is the standard 2SI, similar to SEMA CMAC, which means that it's not happy. It could be not be reading the ROMs, you know, all sorts of things. So, uh, but it is just straight white. Sometimes they get funny colors. That means it's even worse. But because this hasn't actually been recapped, so, you know, uh, that could be the issue. It could be the recapping. And of course, it desperately needs to clean because, oh my goodness, it is very dirty. So, but it's very promising. That's really promising. That's a lot more life I th than I thought we were going to get out of it. Now, what time is it? It's quarter past two. Do people want me to recap this? I mean, are we going on too long here? Are people starting to get tired and wanting to go to sleep and going, oh my God, will you just end this? You clown. Um, but there are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten caps that need to be replaced. It's bloody stinking hot in the shed, I can tell you. But I can take it. I can take it. I was raised in a heat wave. What's the third of February? That's cool. Davros says hello. We can at least take the caps off, even if we don't end up recapping it. Oh, far out. It's um, it's 39 at the moment. That's the hot, as hot as it's going to get. It's going to start cooling down. Oh, there's a change coming by the looks of it. Uh, come 4 p.m., it's going to drop right down to 30. That'll be nice. I'm so hot. Still, I've got this air conditioner here. Um, how long have I actually been going for? Two hours and fifteen. That's not too bad. Have a canine on my desk. Oh, okay. I love canine. So I've got a. I need to get a canine. I wonder if I can three D print one and then paint him. Yeah. Um. All right. There's all sorts of gunk and stuff on this. All the caps have got to come off. That's just how it works with Max. Here we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These stink, by the way. The other ones, when I was taking them off, they didn't smell. But these ones reek. Anyone who's done any recapping before knows the smell. And of course, these aren't bulging up because they're already got a leak in them. They're already compromised. Now, I mention this when I talk about the 2SI uh, a lot. Um, the We have here two little chips there and there. They are the sound chips and they're very distinctive because they're rectangular shaped PLCCs and as often been said I, I think they are the only rectangular PLCC chip in existence. Um, the old well, certainly on Macs, the old uh, sound chip. You will find that same sound chip on a Mac Classic. You will find that same sound chip on a Mac Portable. And you'll find that same sound chip on a 2CI. So I just always mention that to people because sometimes if you get parts problems and you go, oh, I need a new one. And you'd be like, oh, I can get that part from this computer. Just 
Sloopy Malibu, hello. Okay, that cap bulged a bit, so that guy wasn't leaking. I, th I really feel like I want to drink beer, but it's still quite early. But because it's so hot, it's just making me want to drink beer. But if I, at my age, if I start drinking beer at this time, by bloody 7 o'clock I'll be asleep. How? Hot. Bernie's. Hot, hot, hot. Is there anyone watching who has been here since right at the beginning of the live stream? If you qualify, congratulations. You've done well. Ah. Good on you people for sticking around. Well done. Missed four minutes at the start. <gasps> four whole minutes. It's all right. I was just talking during that time, I think. I mean, I've been talking the whole bloody way through it, but you know, I mean, I wasn't actually doing anything. I don't want to do what I did last time where I actually left uh, two caps on by mistakes. Nope, oh, looking good. So this little section here, I'm right in a sea of plastic. I need to get some exercise today, but I know, don't know how I'm going to do it, because it's too hot. I went for a walk yesterday, uh, about a oh, 40 minute walk, something like that, and it was 35 degrees, and that was pretty uncomfortable. The first part of the walk was alright, but by the time I, I'd finished, you know, the last sort of 5-10 minutes of it were really uncomfortable. Okay. Tom Armstrong from the beginning, well done. Jack 68K from the beginning. So Carthor missed four minutes. Josh Hayes from the beginning. Paul Biley from, from the beginning. Ha, ha, ha. Well done, people. Well done. <clears throat> Your commitment is astounding. Um, if this still gives me white screen after uh, recapping. Of course, it will need to be ultrasonically cleaned, but uh, the first place that I would be looking for um, problems are uh, corroded traces around here, these two ROM chips. Romedy, 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 Romedy. Romedy, Romedy. That's a slot for a ROM sim right there. And if you... Where's the jumper? There it is. If you put a jumper on that there, it reads from the ROM rather than from this ROM. Um... And uh, and the other place, of course, are these these corrosionals around here, uh, around these RAM. Well, actually, the corrosion around here probably doesn't matter too much because it's going to the PDS slot and it's going to the ROM sim, and we don't need either to boot. My toothbrush makes a great noisy pointer.
I have COVID, so not much else going on. Well, you have my sympathy. I hear there's a lot of it going around again. Um, I have only had it once so far. And that was right... Uh, oh, I was going to say right at the beginning, but it wasn't. And it had actually been going for... The COVID thing had been around for quite some time before I got it the first time. But I don't go out much, you know. I'm, I don't have to go... You see, I work from home, so I don't have to go on public transport. and I, I don't have to go into an office full of people and stuff like that. I have minimal exposure to other people. It's just the way I like it. Sometimes I go outside and I see the neighbour and I go, <gasps> and I walk back inside again because I'm like, I don't want to talk to them. Nothing wrong with my neighbour. I just don't want to talk to them. Boop -a doop. Well, thank you for the uh, commitment of going back and watching the first half because you missed it. That's, that's excellent. Thank you. I have to stick some uh, UV mask over these little traces in the middle here. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to probably just scrape these other ones off. Because if I'm going to UV mask it, I want to make absolutely certain that they're all looking good. Uh, did E proms? ever get used much in Max? Yeah, yeah, they did, but I think that was a lot later. Is that is my scalpel rusty? I'll replace it if it is. Okay. Time for some UV mask, my friends. Anyone who's not sure what this is, it is, it's basically the green stuff you see on this board. And it is, uh, uh, it dries when it uh, comes in contact with UV. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I need three and a half volts. There we go. And then I need to plug in my laser that I have here. Laser. With my banana plugs. Okay, it's so just going to paint a little bit onto these little, little middle bits here. The board's got to be lovely and clean before you apply this stuff. Otherwise, it won't stick. That's a lot. Okay. Looks good to me. Why use a hot air gun to remove caps when you use a soldering gun to put new ones on? Um, well, the thing is that these are held on with two little pins. Two pins. Two pins, I tell you. And with a soldering iron, I can only melt one pin at a time. Uh, and in order to get these off, you need to melt both pins. Now, you have an option with that. You have a few options. Option number one, you can use two soldering irons. One soldering iron for each side. The other option is you can use soldering tweezers, and that's where... You have a pair of tweezers that are actually like a soldering iron so that both ends of the tweezers get hot. I don't have soldering tweezers. So I use a hot air station where I can just heat the whole component and, uh, and then remove it. Okay. Let's this with a little bit of heat while we're...
Okay, so that once was a liquid, now it's a solid. Bye bye. Ron, thank you very much. Bruce is like an Aussie groundhog. He's a neighbour, goes back inside for another six weeks. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, I sit there at the window going, go away, go away, go away. And then when I see them go back in their house, I then run out and hop into the car. Comfort levels, comfort levels, comfort levels. Questionable comfort levels. Thank you very much for the super chat, Ron. That is much appreciated. Anyone know what brand of UV mask is the best? To be honest, I don't know that there's really much between them. Now, the brand that I buy is... Ugh. It was a mechanic. It's just like some generic, I don't know. I really don't think there's much difference between them. You can buy them in different colours. <laughs> we don't have groundhogs, so that's not really... The closest thing that we would have to a groundhog is probably like a wombat or something like that. Because they dig holes underground. They have been known to kill children as well. Um, they don't do it on purpose, but uh, they build... They make big holes, because their wombats are quite a sizable creature. And kids crawl down the holes, and when they crawl down there, the wombat thinks the hole is collapsing, and so they push up, push up with all their might, and then they squish the person that walks down the hole. So the, 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 the secret is, essentially in Australia, don't go down any holes by anything. Don't put your finger in a hole, don't put your body in a hole, just stay out of all the natural holes. All the holes, because there's probably a critter in it that's going to kill you. That's just that's something you learn after being in Australia. Don't finger in a hole. So put your hand down a hole, don't. And when it comes to funnel web spiders, the whole saying of he's more afraid of us than we are of him just doesn't apply, okay? Funnel web spiders uh, exist to stuff you up. Yes, we've got to, yeah, we've got these bandicoots, absolutely, and bilbies, um, little little jumpy things, little cute little jumpy things. Do they do big dig holes? I don't know if they dig holes. Hot. <laughs> Drop bears. Jumping spiders are very cute. They're all, most of the jumping spiders look look the same. You can ch tell they're a jumping spider just by the shape of them. You just like immediately see them, and they have cute little faces. They're tiny though. They're really tiny, so you need like a macro lens if you want to take a picture of their face. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Heading off for tonight. Got to finish that soldering series before I go to sleep. Thank you, Apollo. Thanks for joining. And remember, um, always, if you have any questions, just jump onto the live stream, onto, onto one of my live streams, and feel free to ask. That is always the way. 
I'm kind of putting the caps on as I go with this. Don't ask me why, because I don't know. I'm just doing it that way this time, for fun. Hot. Well, I should probably check and see what time the shops are open till today, because today's a public holiday. So they might shut early. And I need to buy some things. I'm gonna check. What am I looking for here? Looking for... Closes 10 p.m. Straight hours. Closes 10 p.m. That's fine. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll be there well before 10 p.m. What am I cooking for tea tonight? So I'm doing uh, a sort of a, a, a kind of like a poutine. Um, so it's a naughty meal. It's a, it's a naughty meal. So for those who uh, may or may not be familiar, I'm sure most people are familiar of, uh, with the um, Canadian uh, dish poutine, which is basically, it's virtually just like loaded fries. And um, I do it slightly differently to the way, to the one, I don't use like a curd. I just use like a nice melty cheese, like a Colby or even a mozzarella, or uh, if you want to go real fancy, a bit of a Gruyere. Um, and I'm going to make them sort of like a loaded fries. So I'm actually, I've got some um, cooked, I've got some like a, 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 a almost like a, like a, um, a s sort of pasta sauce type thing. It's mint, mints and stuff. And uh, I'm going to get that and I'm going to sprinkle that over the chips and then I'm going to, or fries, sorry, we call them chips, fries, and uh, and cheese. And I'm going to heat that in the oven until it's all nice and crispy with the melty cheese. And then I'll sprinkle some chili and some, probably some chives or spring onions on top of it. So um, so it's sort of my own version. Uh, I, I just mentioned poutine because if you're trying to get a, a, an idea it's sort of that kind of thing it's like a loaded fries type thing and I'm going to do that and it's probably going to be extremely unhealthy fattening and everything but it is a special night tonight so special meals for special night <clears throat> decided to turn on the fume extractor And of course, I will also drink copious amounts of alcohol. Not copious. That's, that's, you know, well, probably copious for some people, but, you know, not for me. And we'll probably watch a film. See what's, see what's good. Anyone got any recommendations for movies at the moment? Good film that they've seen lately? Because uh, I tell you what, there's some garbage out there. Has anyone seen the Marvels? Is it really as bad as everyone is saying? Mad Max. I've seen Mad Max. I've seen Mad Max lots of times. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably UV mask these two. That one's okay, but this one's got these these here. Lake Mungo for me. I saw that one. 
Uh, I saw Lake Mungo, and I, I'll be honest, I I expected more from it. It's it's interesting. It's um, it's there's some very good moments in it. I, I'll give it that. But I have to admit that I got to the end of Lake Mungo, and 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 it was a little disappointed. Um, but you know, I'm still glad I watched it. There's been a bit of outrage from some people in this area about the fact that uh, Margot Robbie didn't get a nomination, an acting nomination for Barbie. But um, I'm saying it's unfair because what's his name? The guy did end up getting an acting nomination. And to be honest, if you ask me, I, if, I think it is a travesty. I think it's a travesty that anyone fucking got nom nominated for an acting uh, award in that movie. Didn't really think much of it, to be honest. I apologise to anyone who watched Barbie and loved it, but I found it very confused. Oh, yeah. A very confused film. Slow burn, yes, definitely. There are a couple of moments in that that are really good, though, I, I will say. Um... Have you seen Mad Max Fury Road, the latest one, the the, the one with uh, Charlize Theron in it? I have seen that. Is that the one? That's the, that's the Fury Road one. I, I I have seen it. I've kind of forgotten it though. I don't really remember it very well. And it's not because I've got a bad memory or anything. I've got a particularly good memory when it comes to the movies, but it just didn't. I didn't find anything particularly memory memorable in it. I like Nicholas Holt in it. I honestly just don't think Mad Max Fury Road needed to be made. I don't think Mad Max 3 needed to be made either. Uh, so, have you seen, uh, if we're talking about Oz horror films, have you seen uh, The Babadook? Mystery Margot? Lift on Netflix was okay. Oh, that's the aeroplane movie, isn't it? That's uh, some terrorists or something on board or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, I read the synopsis of that and then people said some pretty not nice things about it. Oh, actually, look, I'll, I'll, I'm going to challenge you here, Mystery Margot. Now, this is not, New, uh, not Australian. This is a New Zealand film. But this is an awesome horror film. If you haven't seen it, oh, I've just got to remember what it's called, though. Eh. Looking it up. Some really good suspense in this film. Uh, if I can find it. It's called Housebound. Housebound. All one word. Uh, it gets 96% Rotten Tomatoes. And... 2014 it was made. I uh, highly recommend it. It's uh, there's good humour in it as well. It basically centres around a character who uh, has had a few run-ins with the law, and they let her off having to go to jail as long as she goes and lives with her parents. So she's sort of like a, I guess in her twenties or something like that, and she goes back to live with her parents. And then things happen. Brain Dead, Meet the Feebles. The Meet the Feebles is a uh, uh, Peter Jackson film, isn't it? This is the Lord of the Rings director. Pretty sure he did that. Uh, what was the one that he did before that? What was that very first horror film that he did? I don't think it was Brain Dead. It might have been, but he did a horror film 
as his very first film. I mean, it took him years to make it because he he just did it on like you know student money sort of thing. Bad taste. That's the one. Thank you, Paul. I can smell toast. I hope that doesn't mean I'm having a stroke or something. Um, okay. I mean, I really can't smell toast. I wonder if my wife's making some toast. Shall we check on the chickens? Yeah, let's just see how the chickens are going. There's one. That's the deaf chicken. I mean, blind chicken. Sorry, wrong sense. Uh, she's uh, wandering around there, probably looking to get a drink from the water where the pigeon is drinking from. So there we go. We're going to win this race. Talk to me, yeah, I saw that. Found that actually quite disturbing. My my wife actually was she was like, nah, I I don't want to. I don't. I am not enjoying this. It's a good film. It's a very good film. Very good horror. There's n absolutely no doubt about that. But there were some scenes in that that were actually quite disturbing. I thought, especially involving the the kid. But very good horror. Sebastian, is it Rossetto? I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that surname, so I apologize. Here in um, Montevideo, Uruguay. Uh, okay, what is that? Yeah, 42 past midnight. And I try to stop see you stream because it's amazing, your job. And I learn a lot from you. Thank you very much for that. It's a lovely thing for you to say. Um, and I apologize if I mispronounce your surname. I'm not sure of how that C should be pronounced. There's a C as a cut sound or a S or something like that. Um, but thank you very much for those kind words. I really appreciate that. I probably should spin this around this way. Kids in horror is always disturbing, yep. Righty, righty, righty. Jedi master stolering skills. <laughs> Uh, one thing I will basically say about soldering, and there are two things that actually make soldering way, 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 way easier. Three things. Two things. Three things. I don't know. We'll come up with them as we go. There might be more. Uh, but one of them is um, the microscope. Being able to see what I'm doing really clearly makes soldering so much easier because you can actually watch the solder, watch the way it's behaving, watch, watch when it's... Um, you know, when it's liquid, when it changes to solid, you know, you can actually see it as that happens. So having a really good view of what you're doing is a, makes a big, big difference to um, the, you know, the ease of soldering. Uh, flux is, of course, another really important thing when it comes to soldering. Having a good quality flux will often, you know, get the solder to do what you want it to do. That's two things, isn't it? That'll do. If I think of any more, I'll let you know. Oh, and practice. Practice is the other thing. Um, I, I didn't, I wasn't born soldering, you know what I mean? I, it's like, I have been soldering since a very young age, but I didn't actually end up getting quite good at it until much, 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 much later. Uh, I've told this story on my live streams many times before, but when I very first did a recap, you know, sort of replacing the caps, the capacitors on a vintage computer, my very first one was an SE30. I found out about it about what I needed to do through an online forum. I basically posted a photo of this this computer, the 2S, 2S, I'm sorry, the SE30 with ca caps that had fallen off. And I said, 
what's happened here? What's, what's going on? And they said, yeah, that's normal, perfectly normal. Um, you just need to replace it. And someone point, actually pointed me to a website where I ordered online some replacement capacitors, came in a little kit. Um, I replaced the capacitors and I got the computer working and I'm like, yay, isn't that awesome? Some years later, I came back and had a look at the soldering job I did on that computer, and it was bad. And so I ripped off all the capacitors and did it again properly. No clean flux is good, or more like the honey flux are better. So I like tacky fluxes. I'm using a whole range today, and the reason for that is I've got so many tubes open. Um, when I started uh, investigating the situation that was going on with Amtec Flux a couple of years ago, uh, the company that I was dealing with sent me a whole bunch of samples. They sent me, well, first of all, they sent me a particular type of flux, and I said, this doesn't look right. And they said, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's all good, no worries. Um, we'll send you what you want and keep what you have. So I ended up getting twice as much flux than I paid for. And then they sent me a bunch of samples. And so I have all of this bloody flux. And so I don't want to waste it. So I'm just getting through it. So at the moment, I'm not even using the flux I want to use. This isn't necessarily the flux that I prefer using. But I'm not going to waste it. I probably wouldn't use it if I was doing surface mount soldering. But using it for cleaning pads and, you know, recapping a few whopping great big tantalum caps it's a fine so these are the last three caps by the way and then we will test out this see if it works i'm expecting it i'm going to give it about a probably 30 percent chance of working after this recap um you know it needs to clean um but you never know certainly worth a try i just want to have a look here because there's something that looks like we may have a trace break or not have continuity so just going to get my multimeter Where's Ron? He's the one that says that. And I'm going to just check here. There's just a little bit of a dip at the bottom of that trace there. So you've got sorry, the pad there, and then you've got the trace underneath it, and there's just a bit of a line between the two, and I want to see if we've got continuity here. And the answer is no, we don't. So, we have actually found a trace break here. So, I'll be able to just uh, do that with solder. I won't need to do a wire or anything like that. So, yeah, it's just a break right there. I'm just going to, uh, yeah, just put loads and loads of, um, of solder on it and... Uh, and it will bridge it. Sample 88 or V3 as it is called. Yeah, uh, look, I am still firmly in the V2 camp. I love the V2, not, uh, not V2, sorry. Um, ASM, does that sound right? ASM. Got a tube here somewhere. Yeah. The ASM. ASM Flux is my favourite, uh, without a doubt. Um, I have been recently trying a different Flux, which is called, this is the Styri High Temperature, Styri HT. That's good too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, the V3 has the, the, the real advantage that it is a, um, a reach compliant, which means that it's not, uh, its fumes aren't as yucky. So, um, if you're not using a fume extractor or something like that you know the v3 is probably better for your health if you're going to be using it i've got a fume extractor here which i even remember to turn on sometimes last three caps and then we'll try this out if it doesn't work he's going into the ultrasonic cleaner but i will be finishing the live stream regardless because I've been going for a long time and I need a break. I need to uh, have a drink. I need to go shopping. Um, buy some things for tonight's dinner. 
get some food for my cats. I have four cats. I didn't mean to have four cats, but we found two cats, or two kittens, little tiny kittens, about probably four weeks old. We found them uh, in a park when we were going for a walk. We were just walking and we just saw these little kittens jumping around. And there were some people at the park and we said to them, look, are these yours? And they're like, no. And I'm like, oh crap, you know, these guys are way too young to be away from their mother. So we looked around to see if there were any more of them. Couldn't see any cats or other kittens or cats anywhere. So we scooped them up, brought them home, nursed them back to health because they were in a pretty bad way. Um, they had worms, they had ringworm, they had, they were malnourished. Um, and so we had some looking after to do. But we have raised two beautiful little fat cats. Uh, got some beer to drink. I want some, I'm, geez, I'm ready for beer. I've got some beers in the fridge. Definitely beer weather. I mean, I'm more of a wine drinker, but I'll tell you what, on a day like today when it's so hot, that first beer is going to barely touch the sides as it goes down. Um, now, 2SI, built-in video. Okay, so we don't have to worry about sticking any VRAM chips or anything like that. It's got some built-in RAM. I think it's like, is it two megabytes? Or one megabyte? Or something? It's, it's, it's some obscenely small amount of RAM built in. It's like, why'd you even bother? Just doing a little rudimentary clean around here because there's a lot of flux. And there was some leakage there. And of course, we've got the sound chips here and, and a bear in there. And a chair as well. So we did find a trace break that was just Hoya. Oh, I didn't. Remember how I said I was going to just do it with some solder? I didn't do it. I'll just check my continuity there. Yep. We've got our continues there. Oh, come on. Thank you. Um, all right. So we're going to try and power this up now. And with very, very low expectations of it actually firing up. But if it does, won't that be a wonderful thing to finish the live stream with? But even still. And I didn't actually expect to do two of these in one. But in one live stream. I thought I'd do two live streams. But I just had all this energy. Yeah. Get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here is our monitor. We were already getting a video signal before, but we just weren't getting anything useful. We weren't getting a, uh, uh, we weren't getting a, a cursor or a flashing question mark or anything like that. So we just, it just was not, it was not good. All right, so I plug that in there. Where'd I put my power supply? Is it still up here? No. Oh, here it is. This is a special power supply rig that I've got set up which bypasses the soft power on these. So it means that if there is a problem with the soft power, uh, you know, if it starts, if, if it doesn't boot normally, I know it's the power supply or the soft power. If it work, works with, um, yeah, so if it works with this but doesn't work with the normal power supply. Okay. Drum roll. Um, just check and make sure that I haven't got metal touching things that might be creating a short. I haven't even checked to see if I put the caps around the right way. I'm just assuming I did it all right because I, I've done this many times before. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Oh, it's good to do a head count. I missed one. It's 
Sorry people getting all worked up like that. Right here. Forgot to uh, replace the cap. You idiot! Sorry everyone. What a letdown. What a what a what a pisser. This is one of these fluxes. You see how yellow it is? They started off white, but this is uh, outside of its use by date. And it still works quite well as a flux, but it just you end up with the that discoloration. Because fluxes do have a use by date on them. <sighs> okay, we are past this silly little oversight. We're going to put this on. This is why you check. This is why you count afterwards. This is why. Computers. What about that uh, Mac 40th birthday, eh? 40 years since the Macintosh was in introduced, hey? Eh? How about that? Right, okay, let's try again. Uh, just check and make sure again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. That's how many, how many I think there should be. Eleven. I will just check that on the website. Recapamac.com.au. Eleven forty-seven microfarad, sixteen volts. So we've done good. We've done good. Second time round, of course. You can still connect the floppy drive up to these ones. It gives you an idea of how old it is. External floppy drive port there for those who want to connect an external floppy drive. Um, power supply down here, not far away. Right, oops, clicking mouse, clicking mouse. It's a bad thing when you're doing live streams because all of a sudden your view can change without you realizing it. So, uh, screen, let's try this again. Ready for the drum roll. Does it need a battery to start? No, it doesn't. Computer History Museum uh, celebration yesterday was lovely. Yes, I watched about probably 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. I had other stuff that I needed to do, so just didn't have enough time in the day to sit there and watch it, but I do intend to go back and watch more of it and see all of those wonderful people doing their talking. Okay, you ready? Seti? I still think it was a stretch. Chris Espinosa saying that without Hypercard you wouldn't have the World Wide Web. I think, eh, that's a stretch there, mate. Alright, okay, we ready? Seti? Goey. Okay, we've got the green light straight away, we've got the white screen. And if this is going to work, what we would then see is we would then see that white screen go grey and get little curves in the corners. Curve, 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 curve. And then have a little a happy, facey, macky thing in there. And of course, we're not getting that. Now, the, main, the reason why I think that is the case, well, first of all, this board is covered in corrosion. So, and I can see a solder ball. Let me just get rid of the solder ball, because solder balls can be enough to actually uh, stop these things from working. 
Anyone see that? Oh, no, you can't because they haven't got the microscope on. Have a look at this. Look at him. Look at that. Solder ball. Okay. Back to top view. Uh, sorry, but just before, while I've got the microscope view, where I think the problems are, I mean, apart from obviously all the corrosion, I think the problems are around here, around these ROM chips, and these traces all coming out of here and like that. I just, I really think there's going to be a break somewhere. Somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. 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 So that, that'll all be the stuff I look at later on. But anyhow, we'll just go back to the top view. After removing that solder ball, did it make any difference? Probably not, but we'll switch it on anyway. That, that, everyone's going to be thinking that's like a cursor. No, it's not. It's a little bit of fluff. So, um, I am feeling some heat coming. Oh, I'm feeling some heat coming off the CPU. It's like some pretty warmthness. Um, so, anyhow, yep, it's going to need a bit of a clean. So, well, as I have, you know, I'm. All along, really, when we've all had a look at these computers, we've seen the pictures, we've seen the state that they were stored, all that sort of stuff. Uh, these are going to be a restoration project. They're not necessarily going to be immediately fixed. Um, you know, it's going to take some time. These are both going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner, both this one and uh, this one. Uh, so they're going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll see if that makes a difference, whether they uh, start working after that, whether cleaning is all that is required. But, um, you know, um, the plan is to, to get these working and then potentially, you know, give them a new life. People can use them and play with them and all that sort of stuff. So I would like to remind everyone to please smash that like button. Uh, and as usual, I want to say a big thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you for the for the chat. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for keeping me company while I've been doing this. I do appreciate uh, uh, the company from everyone while I am uh, working my way through these sorts of projects. Uh, there are, is going to be a part two and a part three. We've still got an LC2 and an LC3 to work on. And of course, we still have to get these ones working. And then if I'm feeling like, like I'm looking for some punishment, I've got an LC580 where the board looks like. So, um, thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, I have got my Patreon supporters names in this little outro, so please stick around and check that out. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for all of your continued support for the channel. And I hope to see you at the next live stream. So, thanks again and have a good one and bye now. Yeah.